The Golden State Warriors just refreshed our memory, as the last occurrence of Curry being in Sacktown resulted in him tying Kevin Durant's record for points in a Game 7 with a 50-piece. This time, in a late October tone setter, the chef poured another master recipe over the entire city of Sacramento, posting an incredibly efficient 41. Meanwhile, despite facing pressing questions about the extension he hasn't been offered yet, Clay Thompson reminded us about his unfazed killer mentality against the rival Kings, as in Sacktown, this man scored a dub second most 18, combined with the rest of the starting five for 31 dimes, and had his best defensive performance in a minute. Air Canada Andrew Wiggins chipped in 11 to go along with two patented block shots. CP3 gave us a prime New Orleans Hornets performance, taking the pressure off with some punctuating mid-rangers, but most prominently Chris finished with a massive 12 assists. Bash brothers off the bench and third-year pros Kaminga and Moody were two of six double-figure scores, while Moses was a game-high plus 11. Iron Man Kevon Looney flashed back to his days of domination at Alexander Hamilton High School in Milwaukee. Loon Dog left Sabonis in the dust with a rare momentum to his offhand and line drive attack. Later on, we'll talk about the importance of Looney's one true fellow five-man on this roster, who Kerr will have to trust at the center spot even after Draymond's return to the lineup from an ankle sprain against Phoenix. Stay tuned. If you're not in the 11.9% though, please subscribe, splash thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and follow at dflowhoops on Instagram and Twitter. Thank you a ton for any bit of support, back to the content. After falling in 6 to the Lakers in last spring's second round, a series prior, Curry's Game 7 for the ages where he dropped 50 on 20 made field goals in Sacktown got lost in the shuffle. Speaking of getting lost in the shuffle, and so many are quick to bring up the longevity of LeBron James at 38 in year 21, and rightfully so, the man being able to elevate like he can after making the finals a legendary 9 times in 10 seasons from 2011 to 2020 is incomprehensible. All I'm saying is, it's also worth bringing up how soon to be 36 year old reigning 29 point per game score and top NBA point guard Stephen Curry is defying the test of time in his own right. And what makes how well Curry's playing into year 15 increasingly insane is the fact that he was severely injury prone in his early years. The mental perseverance and preparation to overcome the odds when it seemed like the book was written on him is truly inspirational. So inspirational. While Curry's single game 7 scoring record in Sacramento last spring was snapped by Jason Tatum around after Steph tied Kevin Durant for that feat, he just broke new ground against those very kings. Passing his teammate Klay Thompson, Curry set the record for the most 40 plus point, 90 plus percent true shooting games in NBA history. That just proves how the frequency of efficient high scoring performances put together by the Splash Brothers is unmatched. Early in Sacktown, Steph's legendary movement without the rock in his hands was on full display. As he opened up with a slippery off-ball relocation to the corner, an equally evasive cutback door on Herter and a clean retrieval of the Thompson bounce pass. Drive from Andrew Wiggins collapses the pressure of Herter, and Murray for whatever reason doesn't commit to closing out. Utilizing the Dario Flair, his capacious cut around the screen gets Sabonis anticipating entry to the slipping Sarich, but it's still a highly contested mid-ranger with both Monk and Mitchell in the vicinity. Note the upright shooting foundation and focus after this double screen from Andrew and Kavon get him the inch of room he needs to let it fly between the high drop of Sabonis and tight trail of Barnes. Back to the off-ball movement though, as the empty side Andrew pinned down sees Steph hop into this catch and shoot. Off-ball jab fakes the relocation around the Thompson pin down, catching Fox out of position to open up the lane for him to receive the loon dog dime. On-ball iso denies the clay screen, and a body shifting but stay in position slow-mo cross, sudden burst left, simultaneous hezzy on the move pivot, then KG stop on a dime gets Herder sliding, and the parallel rise fall and land on his release allows him to make this incredibly contested shot on the move. The combination of shot creating instincts and tough shot making ability are one of one, as a fake Smitty dribble is chained with a legit 360, one dribble step back, momentum cross through the Sarich pick and top of the key pull up. Semi transition DHO from Peyton sees Duarte top lock the entry, but Steph have the impulsivity to swoop around Peyton's back to get Gary's nifty pass through traffic, and to the surprise of Duarte, immediately let it fly. And watch the Selly, as you can just tell this man's letting everything flow. Hit with these type of blitzes all game, the handle right here to navigate downhill despite getting doubled twice is first class. And finally, for the thousands of skeptics doubting the clutch gene, the dubs were up 5 here to be fair, but after another great drive and kick from Andrew Wiggins, this deep range bomb under duress of the late Barnes closeout did seal the W. Right before getting to the solution for Looney's durability, 
It's becoming increasingly evident that the collective basketball intelligence of this Warrior team is vamped with the addition of Chris Paul, who has more left in the tank than Dub Nation initially gave him credit to have. Three Hall of Famers roam in the backcourt, allow Stephen Kerr to have confidence in running the most advanced of off-ball motion. CP3 elaborated on all the firepower, saying, We all on the same side now. It's really dope to be on the side where you driving, guys don't want to help, and you get in wide open layups. We should have more time to go in depth on that as the season progresses, but let's move on to the center position. The first Trace Jackson Davis sighting of the season occurred with 440 left in the third frame, and given he's the roster's only true center aside from Looney, it'll be essential for Kerr to guide and develop the rookie through every lapse in judgment and rookie mistake. Because you have to watch Kavon's minutes just as, if not more attentively, in comparison to Steph's. Trying Saric as that backup 5 isn't too effective given he gets bodied around a lot and rightfully so given he's naturally a stretch 4 that's playing out of position. Given Mike Dunleavy opted not to sign free agent center Dwight Howard, this leaves Kerr the task of getting Trace to the point where he's ready to compete in the playoffs, a tall task given he's a first year pro. Playing Trace once the playoffs hit is also something Kerr has to do. You saw how Mike Malone trusting Christian Brown as a crucial piece on the wing paid off towards the Denver Nuggets winning the championship in 2023, and TJD is going to be forced to have that same type of impact but up front for Golden State in 2024. It's not the fact that I think Jackson Davis deserves an opportunity, it's that if Kevon Looney is going to be fresh enough to be his typical self for when you need him most, you have no choice but to play Trace. Give credit to Kevon though, Loon Dog is an Iron Man, and I think given how Kerr manages the minutes of Curry, he needs to keep a similarly close eye on Kevon. Sure, he's played under 30 minutes twice, but this man Looney was out there for the entire second quarter in Sacramento, having to set every screen and grab every rebound. Kevon held his own, but it did look like he was going to collapse at one point. So Steve needs to be wary of the fact that Looney isn't the 20-year-old kid fresh out of UCLA that he once was. Kevon's played all 82 games in two straight years and is going to be 28 with nine years of NBA mileage not before long. In terms of his backup, given Jackson Davis isn't your typical inexperienced rookie having spent four years in the NCAA, plus has shown to have a uniquely intelligent awareness about him, Kerr shouldn't hold back in making Trace the permanent backup center. Even with Draymond coming back, you're going to need another center. TJD needs to learn. A beastly third quarter run sparked by the two-way brilliance of Klay Thompson, Moses Moody, and Jonathan Kaminga in the non-Steph minutes helped the Dubs gain a massive advantage for when the fourth quarter hit. The Dubs held their ground down the stretch despite a late flurry from Fox and the Kings, portrayed by a night-night celly enticing game ceiling deep range bomb from the chef. But going back to my last hot take, and does Trace Jackson Davis deserve to be the permanent backup center for Golden State in your opinion? Let me know for a chance at next video shout out and to compete in Community Speaks. Today's shoutout goes to Christian Moore, who says assuming they're healthy and Kyrie doesn't do what Kyrie does, Mavs will be a 2-4 seed in the West. Lively is exactly what they've needed Pal to be and he'll get better with experience as the season goes along. Grant was a huge signing for them, not only from a floor spacing aspect, but what he brings on defense. A full offseason and training camp with Kyrie and Luka together shouldn't be overlooked either. The extra chemistry will show as the season goes along. People forget they barely had time to play together at the end of last season due to injuries, and it's tough adding a piece like Kyrie mid-season next to a guy as ball-dominant as Luka. Appreciate every answer as always, D-Flow signing off.